Welcome to another episode of the Black Bass Fisherman, episode 9. This is another video on advanced bass techniques. I'm going to give you one more before we move on to a different section. And as new lures and techniques come out, I'll put those up on my channel. So here's a look at some of the baits I use in advanced bass fishing. So take a good look around the table and you'll see a lot of different things that look familiar to you. And if they don't look familiar to you, I will be explaining all of them as we go along today. So just take a good look at a couple of things as we go around the table. As you can see, I've got a lot of different things out, so we're going to cover a lot of area today. And um, so... The first thing we're going to start with in advanced bass techniques is fishing with bass jigs. Now these are bass jigs. As you can see, they've got a jig head with a weed guard that guards the hook, and you've got a bass trailer on there. The colors that I prefer to use are a blue and black bass jig, a red and black bass jig, and a green pumpkin and a green pumpkin trailer. Now to set up a jig, it looks like this. So this is called a football head bass jig. And this is a Berkeley Havoc Pit Boss. So I'll hold that up for you. This is a Berkeley ha Havoc Pit Boss and this is green pumpkin so what you do you take your bass you take your soft your soft plastic havoc and you take your bass jig your football head jig and what you're gonna do is you're gonna go right through the middle of the bass jig right through the middle You're going to thread them on. You're going to keep threading them on. And then you're going to come out the middle. And then you just push him on. And that's what it looks like. As you can see, I've got the bass jig on there. I've got the Berkeley Havoc on there. And then I also have a weed guard so that's what it looks like see that little crawdad pattern it looks just like a little crawdad and this is the green pumpkin now I use bass jigs all the way down to 1 8 ounce weight all the way up to an ounce and a half when you're punching cover and weeded mats now basically to tie a bass jig on all you do is a knot that you feel comfortable with and I use Yozuri hybrid fishing line when I'm bass jig fishing and I use 15 pound tests all the way up to 20 pound tests Berkeley I mean Yozuri hybrid fishing line so basically what I do is and this is a new knot this is called the uni knot I go through the top so I go through the top of the eye, put my glasses on, go through the top of the eye, and I pull out about, oh, eight inches. As you can see right here, I went through the top of the eye, and I went underneath the eye. And now I hold these lines together, and you're going to make... A loop and once you make the loop it's gonna look like that so you went through the top of the eye came out pulled out eight inches and you made a loop if you could see that loop now you're gonna go through that loop four to five times so let's do it so here's four to five times here's one two, 
three, four, five. Now you moisten it before you pull this tag in. You got to moisten it. So you moisten it and you pull the tag in till it forms a little knot. And the last thing you do is pull the line. See how that just slid? It slid to the eye of the hook. That's a new knot. It's called a uni knot. And I've tested it over a hundred times and it does not break. If you don't want to do the uni knot, you could tie my knot that I've shown you in previous videos, or you could tie my improved knot. And that's the bass jig, and that sits in the water just like that. And these little flappers flap, they move in the water. And bass love bass jigs. And you can fish bass jigs all season long. You can fish them in the winter, summer, fall, and spring. And that's how you tie on and do your bass jig fishing. And it's a really fun way to catch bass. I recommend a medium heavy rod with 15 to 17 pound Yozuri fluorocarbon or Trilene 100% fluorocarbon, 15 to 17 pound. Now the next thing we're gonna talk about is the wacky rig. And the wacky rig is a rig that you're gonna use when you're close to bass and you know there's fish around or if you're having a hard time catching fish the wacky rig is a good way to put fish in the boat and not have a skunk day out on the fishing bank so for my wacky rig I use Gamagatsu and wacky rig VMC hook so take a quick look at that that's Gamagatsu and VMC Wacky Rig Hooks. The Gamagatsu is a two-odd hook for wacky rigging. The VMC is a size one hook. So let's take this hook out of the, Yama, the Gamagatsu and I'm gonna show you how to set up a wacky rig. So you just pull a hook out. This is what it looks like. Now, as you can see, that hook has a weed guard on it. So this is perfect for fishing up next to grass, you know, hydrilla, cabbage. It won't get caught up that much. And the worm I use is a Power, Berkeley Powerbait Max Scent General. This is a five inch worm. I love Berkley Power Bait Max Scent baits for bass fishing, or just the regular Berkley Power Bait bass uh, soft plastics. Either one are perfect. So you just take for the Rocky rig, you go ahead and take a worm out, and what you want to do with this worm and your hook is you want to hook the worm right in the middle. Now you see what that worm is doing? Once you hook him in the middle, when you cast it out, it's going to do that on the fall, which drives bass crazy. And all you do, basically, is jig him in. You just jig him right in. So you take the worm, you hook him right through the middle, right through the middle. Let me get him through the middle. There we go. And that's exactly how it looks. We guard up. And as you can see, see that worm dancing? That worm's going to do that as the worm falls and sinks. And there's the weed guard. And basically, you just go ahead. And I want you to tie whatever knot makes you that you're comfortable with. If you're comfortable with your own knots, then go ahead and use those. I'm just going to tie my improved knot for this one. So you go through the eye of the hook. You go around the line four to five times. Very simple. 
Then you go through the bottom loop underneath the eye, and then you go through the loop that you made. You moisten it, pull it tight. Tr leave about a sixteenth of an inch on your tag ends. Some people leave longer, I don't. And that's what it looks like. Look at that. Look how cool that is. You see that worm working? That worm's going to be dancing every time you jig it. Cast it out, let it fall, slowly jig it up, and that worm's going to dance with the weed guard on there. And that is a perfect way to catch bass in tough conditions when no one else is catching fish. It's perfect. So those two rigs so far, we did the bass jig fishing. That's for structure, points, flats, and rocky area. Then we did the wacky rig wig fishing. That's for up close combat. You're throwing, you're pitching it out only 25 to 30 feet. You're letting it fall on a slack line and shake just like I showed you. So now we're gonna go on to a new rig. And this other rig that I want to talk to you about is called split shotting a worm. So what you do is you basically have a hook 18 inches up from the hook. You clip on two to three size five split shots. So this is what I'm going to do. It's called a split shot worm rig. So I use size two Eagle Claw laser sharp hooks. And I also use bullet, bullet Weights Ultra 10 Split Shots, size 5. So we're going to start out with taking a hook out. And these are size 2 Eagle Claw Laser Sharp. And then we're going to tie this hook on. Once again, do whatever knot you're comfortable with. Just make sure the knot doesn't slip. You know, I'm going to go five times around the line, five times around the main line. Then I'm going to go through my loop, the bottom of the eye, and back through the loop that I made. Then you just pull it tight. Here we go. Now the next step is you're going to clip on your split shots. And I'm going to clip my split shots kind of close to the hook so you can see. But you want them about 18 inches, uh, 16 inches to 24 inches away from the hook going up on the line. And I use two size 5 split shots. So you're going to go ahead and clip these on. You know how to put split shots on. You just go right through the center. So you just put two of them on. And that's what it should look like. So you got two split shots on, 18 inches from the hook. You got your hook tied on. And the worm you want to use for the split shot rig is real important, okay? You want to use a straight, it's basically a power worm. And what that is is a ribbed worm with a tail on it and the worms that I use when I split shot fish the new technique is Berkley power bait power worms and this is a seven inch worm so let's go ahead and take the worm out and the color of this is pumpkin seed so go ahead and look at that look at that worm seven inch ribbed worm with a curly tail at the end so what I do is I take the worm
I go through the middle of the worm about an eighth of an inch and then I come out this is what it should look like your split shots 18 inches to 24 inches above your hook there's your hook an eighth inch in come out with the worm and there's your power tail worm as you can see now you're gonna cast this out over small small boulders and you cast it out over flats that are anywhere from six to eight feet deep and you're not gonna feel a sputter on your rat your rod tip when a bass hits it all you're gonna feel is your lines gonna get heavy so if you feel your line getting heavy at any point once you cast this out let it sink to the bottom you're gonna pop it up about six inches off the bottom and reel in about three to four feet and you're going to let it sit and you're going to do that technique when till it gets all the way back to you and you're going to fan cast from nine o'clock to three o'clock that whole area from a boat or from the bank so that is the split shot rig basically that's a rig also for when it's hard to catch fish it comes in handy so much if you're having a hard time catching fish please use the split shot rig now the next soft plastic rig I'm gonna talk to you about and I know you guys have heard about it it's called the Ned rig and what I do is I use Z-Man's finesse mushroom jig heads they're made by Z-Man, and I use the Z-Man TRD Elastec Soft Plastics. They make net worms, and they're either 3 inches to 2.75 inches long. So all you do for this is you get your Z-Mans, and you get a jig head out. I use size, I basically use size one tenth to one eighth to one fourth and this is the one six ounce size jig heads so you just grab a jig head a mushroom jig head you get a net bait out so for today I'm I'm using Gary Yamamoto it's a five inch sinker five inch worm sorry excuse me and what I've done is I've cut the worm completely in half. I took a regular pack of stick worms, and that's Gary Yamamoto for me, 5-inch Cinco's, and I cut them in half, exactly in half. So you just take one of these little worms, and as you can see, this thing's only about 2.75 inches long, maybe 3 inches that's how long you want your worms and you're just gonna take the Ned rig you're gonna go through the center of the worm right through the center you wanna go on about an inch and three quarters feed them on and that's perfect that's exactly what it should look like you go in about an inch and a half to an inch that's about an inch and a half you then you pull the soft plastic stick bait all the way up against the mushroom z-man's net head and what this thing does is it's got so much action you use this on a medium action eight pound fluorocarbon line now you can buy the Yozuri hybrid this is 12 pound but they make eight pound and that's perfect eight pound Yozuri hybrid fishing line on a medium action spinning rod reel setup and what this does you tie to it whatever knot you prefer or my knot and this bounces and lands like this in the water now some of the baits that have a lot of salt in them 
It's not going to stand up like this. It's actually going to be like this. But as soon as you drag it and bounce it, that tail is going to go crazy. But on the Z-Man Ned Rig, the TRD Finesse Worms, those float. And for the Z-Mans, I prefer if you're just starting out, use the Z-Man TRD Ned Rig soft plastic stick baits. Because they're going to stand up. The Z-Mans float. They're last tech. And they're going to stand up like that. You're going to jig it, and it's going to stand up, and the bass is going to go crazy and grab that thing. And once again, you're going to do a light hook set. You're not going to set the hook like as if you were fishing with a bass jig real hard. You want to do a light sweep of the action of the rod. So that is the Ned Rig. And the colors I use is basically... This is a watermelon candy color from Gary Yamamoto. Watermelon candy. And the Z-Mans, this is a PB&J. So peanut butter and jelly color for the Ned Rig. Those two colors are excellent colors. So we're going to go on to another rig, and that's jerkbait fishing. Now I want you to see, for jerkbait fishing... I use Rapala X wraps. Once again, for my jerkbait fishing, I use Rapala X wraps. And as you can see, one looks like a bait fish pattern, and this is actually a rainbow trout pattern. Anywhere that you've got rainbow trout, 8 to 14 inches, a jerkbait rainbow trout pattern is excellent. And basically, what you're going to do with a jerkbait is, you're going to cast it out. I use a spinning rod, medium action spinning rod, 10 pound hybrid or a fluorocarbon line. You can use Trilene 100% fluorocarbon, you can use Berkeley Vanish fluorocarbon, or you can use the Yozuri Hybrid 10 pound test fluorocarbon. So you cast this out on a spinning reel as far as you can. And once it hits the water, you go ahead and give it a good 8 to 10 reels to get it down to the depth that it's going to stay at. Once you get this jerkbait down to about 5 to 8 feet, depending on which model you're using, you're going to give it two jerks. Boom, boom, boom. Or three jerks. You reel up your slack and wait. In hot conditions, warm to hot weather, you're going to jerk this bait fast and you're only going to give it a two second pause. You're going to jerk it twice, reel in, pause. Jerk it twice, reel in, pause. And what's going to happen is every time you jerk a jerk bait underwater, it's going to move left to right in erratic action. It's going to have an erratic action of a bait fish struggling to live. Now, when a largemouth bass, smallmouth bass love jerk baits, you know, spotted bass, when they see that wounded bait fish, they immediately come over and investigate it. Now, if you're moving it extremely fast, they're going to smash it immediately. Now, in winter conditions, fall conditions, your pause is going to be 5 to 12 to 20 seconds. And I know that's a long time, but you need that when you're fishing. So basically, when you're fishing this, you give it the jerks it's needed, and it's going to swing from left to right underneath the water. And the reason why you want fluorocarbon line is, when that bass swims up to that jerk bait, and it's in the pause position, just sitting still, not jerking, he's going to examine it a little bit. And the fluorocarbon line gives you that much more of an advantage. So I hope you try out these jerk baits. They work fantastic in lakes, rivers, reservoirs, and ponds. So the next bait we're going to talk about is a blade bait. And a blade bait is basically a winter to a fall to winter bait and a late summer bait when the bass move out to deep structure. Anytime the bass move out to deep structure, I use a blade bait or I'll use a three quarter ounce football head jig. 
but I normally use a blade bait. My blade baits are made by Damiki Fishing Tackle, the Damiki Vault. These are the blade baits I use, and they're half ounce. They're Damiki Vault half ounce blade bait. And the colors I use is a cream color or a fire tiger bluegill color. And as you can see, look how thin these baits are. They're not like a square bill and they're much thinner than a lipless crankbait. These are made out of all metal with beautiful treble hooks. And the thing about the blade bait is it's got three different sections to tie to. When you get the Damiki blade bait, it's going to come with a snap, basically. A snap is right on the top of it. A little snap. And you can position that snap anywhere of those three holes. Now, I always choose the middle hole. I don't use the first hole closest to the head. And I don't use the back hole that's all the way in the back. So for the blade bait, you just tie it on with whatever knot you feel comfortable with. Once again, I'm just doing my standard fishing knot. You know, I don't need to name it anymore. I've shown it to you on every video. And I've also shown you the uni knot through the bottom of the eyelid and back through. Moisten it and just pull it tight. Okay. And you cut off the tag end. Now I like to leave about a sixteenth of an inch on all my tag ends. I just do that because I don't like a lot of tag end hanging out, but I do like something hanging out. So that way, if the knot slips barely, you still got about you know a sixteenth to an eighth, eight, an eighth inch of tag end hanging out. So this is how a blade bait looks on the line. Now as you can see, see how that thing is moving up and down? That's what it's going to do in the water. It's going to move up and down like that. You cast this blade bait out in deep water in winter and late summer. And all you do is cast this blade bait out. You let it sink to the bottom. And you jig it up aggressively six to eight inches. And then you let it sink to the bottom again and reel up your slack slowly as it sinks. Once it sinks, you jig it up again, six to eight inches. And when you jig that up, it's going to go crazy. It's going to wobble. It's going to have a tight wobble. And it's going to throw some flash through the water. And you fish it that way all the way back till it gets to you. And these are called blade baits. And they're wonderful baits for fishing in cold weather or in late summer when it's really really hot and the bass move out to structure and these are the colors I use I use fire tiger colors bluegill colors I use an all-white a cream color and you can even use a red and black if you want so we're finally to our last bait of this advanced, ba advanced bass fishing video. And the last bait I want to talk to you about is a chatter bait. Okay? And I use Z-Man's or Revenge baits, chatter baits. And I use bluegill color, green pumpkin, and shad color. As you can see, this is a bluegill colored chatterbait with a gold blade. And this is a shad colored chatterbait. And what you want to do with these is you want to use a trailer. 
And these are the trailers I use. I use a Raid Swimmer 3.75 inch trailer on the all white shad pattern chatter baits. And on my bluegill or green pumpkin chatter baits, I use a 3 8 inch Swim Impact Connect Tech Sun Gill. So this is basically a 3.8 inch trailers. And these are paddle tail trailers. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go ahead and open up. the trailers so you take a trailer out and what you do is very simple you stick this thing upside down you stick your trailer bait upside down to see how long the shaft is Now, when you put these on, you want to make sure that your paddle tail is facing down. So you're going to go through the middle of your soft plastic, right through the middle, and you're going to go in about... I'd say about two and a half inches or two inches then you're gonna come out you're gonna push this on all the way up against the jig head and that is what it should look like let me show you what it should look like so once you get your soft plastic trailer on there, look at that. Doesn't that look just like a shad? You know? And I use 3 8 ounce chatter baits all the way up to 3 quarter ounce chatter baits. And I use the Z-Man chatter baits. I don't throw any other chatter baits but the Z-Man. And this is real easy. There's a little tie point on the bottom of the chatter bait. And what you're going to do is you're going to tie to that tie point. You know, I'm just doing a standard my standard fishing knot, I'm not going to do the improved knot, but you should do the improved knot or whatever knot you're comfortable with. So basically, that's what it looks like when it's rigged on your fishing rod. Perfect chatter bait. And what this does, as you reel this chatterbait, that blade, you see that blade that's on top? It goes crazy underneath the water. And there's no wrong way to fish these. I recommend a medium action for anything from 3 8 to half ounce, a medium action rod. If you go up to 3 quarter, you're going to need a medium heavy. You can fish this with straight monofilament line, 12 to 15 pound test. If you're going to use fluorocarbon, use 12 to 14 pound test on the chatter baits. And they make a lot of noise. They're very easy to lure to fish. You just cast them out and start reeling in. You can let them sink. You can let them, you know, come up from the top only about a foot or two. And I use a reel that's got a 6-3 to 1 gear ratio. But you can use a 5-8 to 1 or a 5-5 five, five to 1. And those are the chatter baits. So I want to thank you so much for tuning in today and going over these advanced bass fishing techniques. Thank you for tuning in. So tune in next time with the Black Bass Fishermen. And remember to like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps.
So if this video was helpful to you, drop me a comment. And also drop me a comment on your page so I can watch your videos. Thanks again.